I'm presently celebrating uh, the 29th anniversary of my heart transplant uh, in uh, 1983. I had a massive heart attack. One of the things that uh, we kid about now is the fact that when I I did some stupid things when when the heart attack was actually happening. Uh, when I felt the pain in the chest, I went outside and did some exercise. <laughs> that didn't stop it. So there's a, a little upgrade in front of my house uh, at home. So I ran up that and back. And it was killing me. After when I came back, uh, I couldn't make it any further, so I fell down on the grass. When they came in with the stretcher, I was going to get up. I, she said, get back in this D-bed. Don't you know you having a heart attack? But, you know, I, they, they, it seemed like it was taking them a long time to get the stretcher here. So the least I could do is go and meet them halfway, I guess. My young son, who passed himself with a heart attack about 10 years ago, said, Dad, uh, you know, we better start looking for somewhere for a transplant because, you know, from what the doctors are saying, you don't have that much heart that's alive. But they were convinced that I was too far gone for any kind of help. So they brought me upstairs. And for the next uh, 19 and a half days, I was oscillating between life and death. Everyone, uh, the residents and, the, and Dr. Cooley and Dr. Frazier, they did a spectacular job. Took me uh, to the surgery room. And when I, as I, as they were loading me up, one of the physicians said, uh, Mr. Washington, do you know you're going to get a 19-year-old heart? What are you going to do with a 19-year-old heart? I said, I'm going to chase my wife around in the room. <laughs> and instead of trying to, trying to uh, draw the heart, electrically such that it would start. Uh, they say it started beating when they had had all of the things hooked up. It began beating automatically and it hasn't stopped. I have that for the first oh five to ten years and uh, you still wonder and you think about where the heart came from because somebody had to die. I've seen my, all of my children uh, grow up and become adults. I've seen my grandchildren be born and some of them are married. And I've seen some of my great grandchildren grow up and become contributing members of society. All of this I'm indebted to the St. Luke's hospital and the Texas Art Institute because without them none of that would be possible. The reason I'm grateful for the uh, Texas Art Institute is the fact that they were doing uh, cutting-edge medicine and where the risks were very high and somehow they managed to do it well and we always will be uh, indebted to the Texas Art Institute. We are a part of it and it is a part of us.